Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing my favorite makeup brushes. I have done a video like this before on my channel, but it's been a while, and I have some new favorites and some new go-tos that I've been using, so I figured I would share with you guys. I feel like makeup brushes or makeup utensils in general are just super important in the application. To me, certain makeup brushes changes the entire game, so I figured I would share with you guys my go-to and favorites at the moment, so if you guys are interested, on my favorite makeup brushes, then let's go ahead and hop on it. So first one is gonna be this guy. It is the Eco Tools Finishing Kabuki Brush. Now this is a kabuki and it's a little bit angled. I think it changes the look of the under eye. Once I put my powder on to set the under eye and I use this to sweep it away, I feel like it just makes it look really airbrushed. I don't think that this is like meant for that, but honestly, you can use makeup brushes in so many different ways. You don't need to just use it in one technique or for one reason, you can use them for multiple different ways. So this one is a little bit angled and it fits nicely on the under eye for me personally, but you can also use this for a contour or just to sweep on some bronzer quickly. I also use this for that and I like the way that it applies it. I'll just kind of do like circular motions for bronzer and it just makes it go on effortlessly. And I like the feel of it. It doesn't feel plasticky, feels really like higher end, but you can really get this like at Ulta or at the drugstore. So yeah, this has been a favorite of mine right now. I've been using it a ton and I do use it for both of those things, powder and for bronzing. And I love it. I think it really makes the powder you're using turn and look like airbrush like. It's super gorgeous and just fits really nicely in the hand. And you have like a lot of control over what you're doing because it is small. So. Next one is going to be this fan brush from EcoTools as well. So it is a typical fan brush, but it's a little bit more dense, which I like because when it's super flimsy, I find I can't get my highlight on for nothing. Only like the finishing touches, I'll use like a really thin one. But for this one, I like it because you don't have to just use this for highlight. You can again use this for bronzer and it really packs on the powder or highlight because it is super dense but it still has some flexibility to it, which is nice. So this has been a favorite fan brush of mine. I like to use a different brush now for highlighting, but I will go back and forth between these fan brushes for either or, my highlight or bronzing up the face, so it just depends. So this will fit really nicely into the cheekbone area and where you wanna create a shadow for like a dusting of bronzer. I mainly use this just on the perimeter of the face and then for like the nose and all that, I will use a different brush for those, but this is really nice for creating a shadow with bronzer or a little bit of highlights and I literally just sweep it like that and you get major payoff because of the bristles on it. I've honestly been loving Eco Tools lately. They're so awesome and I never really used them before and they're at the drugstore so I don't really know why I didn't use them because they're pretty inexpensive but now I've been loving them. So that was another one from them. Next up, this brush has been a big favorite of mine. It is the Royal and Langnickel Highlight and Glow brush. It looks like that. It has like a tapered little domed edge right there. And I absolutely love this for highlighting. It fits perfectly right on the top of the cheekbone. And I feel like I'm like having deja vu where I've already said about these brushes, but honestly, these are the ones that I've been using my go-to brushes. And if this is kind of similar to my previous video, like last year or two years ago, whenever I did that, I still use those types of brushes for the same way. Some things have changed, but majority of the brushes itself have changed. So that's why I wanted to kind of like update you guys on what I'm using. But this brush is perfect for the top of the cheekbone and the nose. And for the inside of the nose, sometimes I use a shadow brush, but mainly I will go in with this and just kind of do it up there like that. Or take my finger and do it like that. But this one is seriously the perfect size, at least for my face shape. It's perfect for the top of the cheekbone, around the temples, bomb.com. And speaking of brushes like this, this is another one that is pretty similar. It's a little bit larger, but it's the same kind of style. This one is by Sigma, and this is their F35 brush. It's the tapered highlighting brush. So it looks like that. It is so perfect for the tops of the cheekbone as well, but it's a little bit bigger than this one and a little bit more tapered into like a longer shape than this one is. But these have been my recent go-to highlighting brushes. Another one from Sigma that I'm absolutely obsessed with is their large angled contour brush. This is the F40. And I don't use this to contour really. I just use dust on bronzer. But I honestly don't contour as much as I used to. And even if I am gonna contour, I'm definitely not using this flimsy of a brush. I like to use something more dense and a little bit smaller just so I can really have control over the line I'm creating, which I'll show you in a second of one that I like. But this one I like to just dust on additional bronzer and just get my face a little bit more glowing with bronzer instead of like shaping and carving it out. 
So I will use the angled side and kind of get the powder on initially, which I'll show you how I do it. I'll just take this Laura Geller one and I just take a little bit on there, tap it off, and I literally just like go in circular motion with the angled part of it. And that's how I use it. And it's so simple, but it fits really nicely right there. I can't really explain it any other way. I feel like I keep saying that, but this particular brush, I feel like you just get the amount of product you put on the brush onto your face. You're not lacking any, and it's just awesome. I think it has something to do with because they are white haired bristles. That could be, but I just really like the way it is and it feels really nicely on the skin. I cannot stand when brushes feel like itchy or like harsh. I like when it's super smooth and it doesn't feel like I'm like rubbing on my face as opposed to like gliding, if that makes sense. So I just really like the way that this one applies. I keep going in circular motions. Like that. Sorry that some of these are dirty. I did just use them so I didn't have really time to clean them. But this one is nice and I love the rose gold detailing. I definitely do have a variety of brands and types of brushes that I love, but all the ones I'm mentioning, I've never had a problem with any of that. So yeah, I just wanna throw that out there because I know some brushes like are wonky like that and some of them you just can't help because they're getting old or they got wet or whatever, but I've never had any issues with these brands. Another Sigma one because I absolutely love this one and this is their 3D HD Precision Brush. So I have talked about this before and showed you guys what it looked like, but it's pretty much like a 3D brush and it has like these beveled edges right here where it creates a straight line in the middle. Absolutely love using this to contour up my nose just a little bit on the sides. It literally lays flat on the nose so it's so easy to create a line and you really don't need to apply too much pressure and I find that it just really glides on and creates a really nice line and easy enough to contour without it being super harsh. It's literally all time favorite for contouring up the nose. Sometimes I find like brushes like like these just don't do the trick for me. Um, I don't know if it's just the way I'm doing it or if anyone else has that issue, but because this lays flat, it pretty much does the work for you. Next up, I have some Vanity Planet brushes. These are so amazing. They're mainly for the eyes, and then this one I would use for concealer because it's more of the flat type of brush, and it just fits really nicely under there. Although I don't really use too many brushes right now for concealer. I use beauty blenders or beauty sponges. This is nice to initially put down the product, and then I'll blend it out with a sponge. But these are awesome. I've never had a problem with them shedding or them coming apart, which is really nice, and these ones are really perfect for me in blending up my eyeshadow because of my lid space is a little bit smaller, so I don't really have much room to work around. So this one really fits nicely in there, and I find I have a lot of control. So these are their eye brushes. This one's more of a blending brush, and this one's more of a denser brush that I would use to like put like an inner corner color, like create more of a harsh line in the crease. But this one's a really nice one to blend out the product. And they don't have like numbers or names, so they did come in like a big brush roll, but absolutely love these brushes and have been my go-to. Next one is this e.l.f. brush, which is pretty new for me. It is their 104 brush, and it looks like this is part of their new collection. The clear barrel is so cute. I love how elegant and like chic it looks. It is more of a contouring brush. And this is a brush that I would go ahead and contour up the face with. Because it's more of a dense brush and pretty short of bristles, it's easy to get the product on there and also blend it upwards if you wanted to blend it out with this one. But to initially lay down and carve out the face, this one is really nice. So I would literally just go ahead and put the product right on the tip and draw on my line because it is pretty dense. You can easily draw. I haven't had a problem with that. And then I'll also use this to kind of go in and buff. So when I buff, I use circular motions. If I'm going to use this brush to blend it out, I will blend it upwards and like back. But if I'm not, I will use like my beauty blender to go ahead and blend it out. And this brush is pretty inexpensive, so that's also a plus. It's, I wanna say like five to six dollars, but I will leave everything down below for you guys to double check. But yeah, super awesome, and their new packaging is so cute. I love it. So I have been using this if I'm going to do a contour. Haven't been doing a strong contour lately, but even to just like put down some powder and just try to get a little bit, this is awesome for that as well. Love it. So next brushes I've been obsessed with are these ones right here. They are the oval type brushes from Moda, and you can find these at Walmart. Super inexpensive, it comes in a pack of four. I have the other two floating around somewhere in my mess. But these are amazing. If you guys watch my dad does my voiceover video, he literally calls these lollipops, and it's pretty funny. If you guys wanna watch it, I'll link it below. But yeah, 
these work great. Um, this one is really good for the face. It gives like an airbrush look and I thought it was going to be a little hard and challenging when I first started using them, but I think it's a lot easier and very like effortless to apply your foundation. So this one has been a favorite of mine. I do bounce back between this one and a few other things to apply foundation. Right now I'm using the Beauty Blender, but this has been a go-to. I've been using this for like months upon months and I could not put it down. So yeah, it's really nice. It's so soft. It really feels like you're just brushing your face and it's just so smooth and soft and oh, it feels so nice. So that is what I would apply my foundation with. And then this one is the baby one, which I would do to go ahead and like structure out my face with contouring. So it depends how I'm feeling that day, if I wanna use more of this type of brush or this type of brush, but these have been my favorites to go ahead and do so. You can also blend just away your product with this one or put your concealer or blend the concealer away. You can use these brushes in so many different ways, however you want to use them. So that's what I really like about that. And they do come with four, so yeah. So pretty. So for blending out my eyeshadow color, a favorite brush of mine is the Sigma Tapered Blending Brush. And of course you can find dupes for Sigma because um, they are a little bit pricier, but these are the ones that I found work for me, that I like the way that it sweeps it away and like maneuvers the product around. Sometimes some brushes for me make it look blotchy and sometimes on other people they don't. So it really just depends and personal preference. So this one throughout using it, I find it works and looks really airbrushed and like very, very blended, although I didn't spend so much time blending, it looks super blended. So this one fits perfectly for blending out the product. And then, then we have another one from Eco Tools, which I probably should have mentioned before, but this one is their airbrush concealer brush. And I don't use this for concealer, but I bet you it would be bomb for that because it's so it's more of a duo fiber brush, which really makes anything look airbrush and blended away really nicely. So this would be perfect for the under eye. I have personally haven't used it for that. I like to use it to go ahead and buff away some product on the eye. So I would use this more in the crease and like transition area. And I really like it. I love the duo fiber factor and how it blends out. So yeah, that's a been a favorite of mine as well. So for my lid, I like to use brushes that look more like this. I have several that are my favorites, but one right now that I've been using a ton is this one. And this one is the Royal and Lingnickel Omnia brush, I believe it's called. And it's more of their detail brush. But I have a smaller lid, like I've been saying throughout this entire video. And it fits perfectly for me. So this is more dense and compact and really presses the product on there. So I like to initially put the lid color down and pack it on. This is what I've been using, but I do use a bunch of other ones as well. But this is the one that was next to me that I've been using. So my last brush right now that I've been reaching towards a lot and loving is this Firma brush. This is the 105 brush. This is a face brush and it is duo fiber. So I love using this when I either just dust on some bronzer or dust away my powder or just put powder on the face in general. I can use it in so many different ways and depending on the product. But I just love the fact that it's duo fiber where Number one feels awesome on the face, so that's a plus. It does give a flawless finish. I really do like putting it like that and like brushing it away, or if I'm brushing away powder, I'll do circular motions. Love this brush. So those are all of my favorite brushes that I've been using currently and that I've been loving, and I feel like some of them have definitely changed since the last time I've let you guys know. So I believe that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe found it a little helpful. And yeah, if you guys have any brushes that you guys are loving that I did not mention or that I did mention, leave it down below in the comments. I would love to read and we can all chit chat together. Until my next video, I will catch you then. Bye! Mwah.